أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته believers the question is were Prophet Muhammad's parents believers or not believers because we have got a lot of opinions here among different people saying that uh, the parents of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam were infidels, kufal, and the rest. Before I can start answering this, believers, the only and the only authentic book, I repeat, the only and the only authentic book is only Holy Quran, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to keep to safeguard to safeguard from all sorts of manipulation inna nahanu nazalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun we are the ones who have revealed this holy quran and it's we to protect it it's only holy quran which is authentic i repeat other books may have some good information some good ahadith like Sahih Bukhari, or the Shia books like Bihal Anwal and the other books. We don't refuse. In case they have some authentic book, in case they have an authentic tradition which does not contradict with Holy Quran, we take it. But in case they have fake traditions which contradict with logic and the Holy Quran, we leave them out. Many propaganda circulate. But all of prof that all of prophets' parents were infidels, and the hell of fire is burning them. Logic says, how can Allah send you a prophet to guide you, to purify you, yet his parents are idol worshippers? Logic, how can it be possible? Over 500 verses are emphasizing to use wisdom, to use knowledge, to ponder and reflect. How can it be possible? Let's go ahead. For the sake of brevity, Surah Imran, verse number 33, verse number 34, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah has tafa adama wa nuhan wa ala ibrahima wa ala imran ala al-alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. He chose Adam and Nuhu, and the descendants of Ibrahim, and the descendants of Imran, above all nations. Among the descendants of Prophet Ibrahim, والسلام, we see Prophet Muhammad and his pure lineage, the Hanifs. In the Jahiliya period, not all people were infidels, were idol worshippers, no. The likes of Abdul Mutalibi, the likes of Prophet's parents, were people of monotheism, Tawhid. Hanifs. We all know that you can learn uh, uh, IRE. You understand? Islamic religious education. They agree. All the people had idols in Holy Kaaba. Besides the clan of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. It's amazing. Before I can even go further. People attack the parents of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. That we are infidels. But you never hear them saying that a father or a mother of such a sahaba, sahaba flan was an infidel. I repeat. People attack the parents of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama, like his father Abdullah, his mother Amina, his uncle Abdul Mutalibi, and others. I mean, his uncle Abu Talib, and others that fire is burning them. But you never hear them that a parent of Sahaba Flan, a Sahaba Flan, a Sahaba Flan, his parents were infidels. They'll never say so. They will always black a male prophet's parents and they will always protect the Sahaba's parents and all Sahabas. 
Prevention is about contemplating. 500 verses plus about contemplation. Reasoning, thinking. Can't we take a minute and reflect on this? How can we pay Prophet Muhammad by attacking him? I said the only authentic book is only Holy Quran. Any tradition which contradicts the logic and the Holy Quran must be thrown out of Islam. If we Muslims don't respect Muhammad, don't recognize him and his parents, who can recognize him? Let's wake up, Muslims. I applaud the Sunni Shafi'i brothers in a book called Bruzanji and other books. Statements are there that the grandparents of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam never bowed down to idols. In Maulid, when they are applauding Prophet Muhammad and his pure lineage, other Muslims end up attacking. And when you come out to defend the Prophet, you may see people want even to kill you, abuse, insult, teach, and everything. Let's go further. We see Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, in Surah Ibrahim, verse number 40. Praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi ja'alani maqima salata wa min dhurriyati. Allah make me among those who establish prayer. And also among my offsprings. The offsprings of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. Among them. A Prophet Muhammad and his pure lineage. And also his parents. From the lineage of Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam. We said all the prayers of prophets are accepted. And this prayer is accepted in Surah Juma, verse number two. Who was the birth of the Ummiyin, the Rasul of Minu, whom Yatul Alayhim ayatihi wa izakihim wa yungalim whom al Kitab wa al Hikim. Up to the end of the verse, is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who chose Prophet Muhammad among us. Yatul Alayhim ayatihi, telling us, teaching us the signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Why you zakih him and purifying us? How can Prophet purify you from shirk, from eating pork, from gambling? Yet his parents are not Ramadans. Can it make any sense? Logic says no, impossible. That's why in Surah Imran, verse number 34, Zuriyatam ba'aduha min ba'adhi. Wallahu sami'un alim. After Allah elevating Adam, Noah, the children of Ibrahim, the children of, of uh, Imran, above all nations, the verse continues. Offsprings one of the other, and Allah is hearing the knowing. What I want to say here is one. After Ibrahim والسلام, came Ishaq and Ismail. Among Ismail, the children of Ismail, is where we find the grandparents of Muhammad who never bowed down to Shilik. I said, all the people, they had idols in Holy Kaaba. Besides the pure clan. Of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Go and make research. We find also Sunni authentic tradition. For instance, the famous Sunni scholar Imam Jalaluddin Asuyuti, may God be pleased with him. He has written nine books emphasizing that the parents of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam were pious. His mom, his uncle, Abu Talib and the rest, and Abdullah, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, his father. There is also the famous Sunni, Sheikh Abdul Haq, Muhaddith, Muhaddith, you understand? The Hilawi. He says, we are clean from uncleanness and disbelief, and disbelief of paganism. They are not pagans at all. Sunni books. 
and also Shia books agree. I'm really sorry when I speak about Prophet Muhammad. This we Muslims, if we cannot save Muhammad, who will save him? If we cannot protect him, who will protect him? Abdul Mutalib and the Kaaba. The reason you can say Abdul Mutalib was an idol worshiper, pagan, and his father. Yet he protected the Holy Kaaba from Abraha, Abraha's plot to demolish it. Fatima bint Asad, the mom of Imam Ali, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the wife of Abu Talib, was one of the pious ladies in Mecca. It's known, gun make research. How could her get married to a pagan, Abdul? Abu Talib has claimed that Abu Talib was a pagan person. Can it make any sense? Let's reason. Let's think. Let's contemplate. All the grandparents of Prophet Muhammad from Abdul Manaf up to Qidari bin Ibn Ismail up to Adam, all these descendants, you understand? We are pious. So the books. Briefly, allow me also to look at the story of Abu Talib here. There are claims, a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, narrated by Al Musayyib. When Abu Talib death approached, Prophet went and found Abu Jahl and Abdul bin Umayyah. Do you understand? Prophet Muhammad told his uncle, Say Kalima, Shahadatain. The one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The tradition says he refused to utter it and he passed away in fiddle life. In Sayyid Bukhari. Pay attention brothers and sisters. Abu Talib protected the prophet Muhammad from the evil plots of the Christ. No one did so. He maintained what we call a taqiyya. Dissimulation, concealing fact, and exposing what is not right. The concept is agreed. We looked at that in our previous lectures. As Zaid did so, when they wanted to kill him, he concealed the fact. And he spoke foolish words against Prophet Muhammad. When he went to Prophet, Prophet told him, in case they get you tomorrow, repeat the same thing. Takia is allowed. Dissimulation. He practiced what we call dissimulation. Let's go further. The last narrative of this tradition that Abu Talib passed away in fiddle life. You understand? Al Musayyib. Who is Al Musayyib? The one reporting a tradition in Sayyid Bukhari. We said the only authentic book is Holy Quran. From traditionist point of view, you understand? A report of Al-Bukhari is not worth taking because the last reporter, Ali Musayib, embraced Islam after the fall of Mecca, after even the death of Prophet, I mean even after the death of Abu Talib. Abu Talib passed away in around the 10th year, you understand, before Prophet's migration to Medina. This person embraced Islam years after the death of Abu Talib, the one reporting that Abu Talib passed away in fiddle life. How can we rely on such a person? The Sunni authentic ink, Sirat, Sirat and Nabi by Shibli Nu'man, volume 1. You understand? Page number 223 to 224 makes it clear. Ali Musayyib, the one reporting, disliked Prophet Muhammad and his lineage. This is Sunni ink, then cross check. Disliked Prophet's lineage. That's why. He ended up uttering such with the influence of Umayyads, Ma'awiyah, you understand, and the Abu Sufyan. Because these were open enemies to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They did not only fight him in Badil and Uhud, but they reached an extra mail of alleging that the parents of Muhammad were infidels. It's amazing they say so, but you never hear them saying that the parents 
of Ma'awiyah or Abu Sufyan were infidels. They'll never say so. They'll always attack Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. When we are dissecting such matters, brothers, we should pay attention. Let's go further. In Sahih Bukhari, when he's interpreting Quranic chapter, when he's commenting on the Quranic chapter 9, verse number 113, Ma kana lil nabi wal ladhina amanu ayastaghfiru lil mushrikin walau kanu ulil qurba that is not worth for prophet to ask for forgiveness for the pagans even though it may be like his near ones when he's explaining he's giving a comment on this he says the verse is about Abu Talib the uncle of prophet Muhammad and the father of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi wa sallam can you pay attention how can we answer such a person? Number one, this verse was revealed after the death of Abu Talib. It was revealed in the ninth year, you understand? After Prophet's migration in, in Medina. Yet Abu Talib passed away <coughs> in Mecca. How can a verse be revealed? After the death of someone and we allege that the verse is about someone. Can it make any sense? Actually, it's amazing that even this verse is among those verses. Khalifa Bakar was taking to read for those people. You understand in Mecca. And, uh, uh, and the Prophet Muhammad stopped him and sent Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib and told him that no one can stand in my shoes, can represent me besides myself or someone from among my offsprings. Or someone from among my pure lineage. That's why I've sent Ali to take them. There are four brothers and sisters. The verse claimed that it's about Abu Talib. We cannot rely on them because they were revealed after the death of Abu Talib. How can we rely on them? I found an astonishing tradition by Fakhraz, one of the most respected scholars in Tafsil Al Kabil, volume 5, page number 3. Fakhraz reports his commentary on Quranic chapter 28, verse number 56, that is about Abu Talib. He says that it is not his personal opinion. You understand? But it was due to the influence of others. Surprisingly, you understand? Accept that could not make any sense Abu Talib to pass away in fidel life. That's Sunni Tafsil. Tafsil al-Kabil, volume 2. Tafsil al-Kabil, sorry. Tafsil al-Kabil, volume 25, page number 3. Fakhraz, one of the most respected scholars, agrees that his commentary on Quranic chapter 28, verse number 56, he wrote it there, not due to his personal opinion, but due to the influence of others. Surprisingly, he accepts that could not make any sense Abu Talib to die in the life. There are fine brief. Abu Talib and all the parents or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam aware, believers. The verses attributed to them, they are about other people who never recognized Islam. I repeat, the only authentic book to rely on is only Holy Quran. We can only rely on other books in case the tradition is, or the information is there, is not contradicting with Holy Quran. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us to the right path and to keep defending the pure lineage of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama. Kindly keep sharing up to the last person. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.